Interesting quarter. I mean, I think some investors might be looking at uh, bookings and orders, which have been pretty solid, and then the June quarter revenue guidance. Can you can you talk a bit about that? Sure. Good morning, Carl. You know, we have been in a major inventory correction for the industry and for microchip for several quarters, and some of the leading indicators are giving us um, optimism about where the outlook for the second half and the next quarter looks. But we have uh, some remnants of continued inventory correction to get through this quarter. So that's the difference between this quarter versus the outlook beyond that. Uh, meantime, the margin guidance appears to be getting some uh, some applause. Can you talk about what's what's resulting in in decent uh, uh, environment on the margin front? Yeah. So you know, at a, at a what is the trough of the um, this inventory correction? We're still going to be forecasting 30 percent more than 30 percent operating margins, and that comes with substantial controls of what we have done uh, for our gross margins. Uh, that's our manufacturing facilities. Uh, our operating expenses, that's what people are doing across the world in terms of uh, both. Uh, we've done some pay cuts inside the company. Everybody is on one. But we're also cutting expenses for all the discretionary items that we have in our control. And we've done better than we expected so far. And that's a great credit to the employees who have engaged and uh, are you know, very much part of the solution. You know, one big piece of the semiconductor story, of course, has been the degree to which they're bringing operations or building operations in the United States with the help of industrial policy, whether that's Micron or Samsung or Intel. Have you been as aggressive on that front as you've wanted to be? Uh, absolutely. So we are about 40 percent of our revenue is produced in factories that manufacture within the United States. We have been expanding these facilities over the last three, four years uh, as the big uh, you know, boom and demand was there, and there were many constraints, and we were alleviating those. We have also got continued growth plans and expansion plans for which we have worked with the CHIPS office uh, on. And we were one of the early recipients of what's called a preliminary memorandum of terms. Uh, we are going through the diligence, which is pretty much done. We got more negotiations to go. But yes, we do intend to expand in the U.S., create significant both capacity as well as jobs. And that is all over a multi year um, phase uh, that we're bringing the capacity on. I'd love to get your take on two uh, pretty important verticals. One is where you think we are in the auto cycle uh, regarding semis. And then, obviously, the conversation inevitably turns to AI. And every CEO is sort of pushed to <laughs> explain where they think they fit in that overall uh, story. Talk about those two. Great questions. So on automotive, uh, you know, during the shortages, uh, automotive went into overdrive to be able to secure supply, but also to be able to secure inventory. And so there is inventory at multiple points in the chain, whether it is our distributor, uh, their customers uh, in the dealerships and various other places in the tier ones. And so a lot of that is unwinding. Uh, the number of cars being produced is not dramatically changing. Uh, there are some mixed changes between EVs and non-EVs and all of that. But also cost of money has gone up over the last three years. And I think the affordability of inventory has decreased. And so there is that unwind happening. It was later. Automotive was among the later segments to do it, so some of it is still left over. Other segments have been earlier in their unwinded inventory. And um, then on with respect AI? To, yeah, with respect to AI, you know, I, I think our view is uh, AI is going to be pervasive in many, many uh, applications. Uh, of course, today, a lot of the AI uh, headlines are around the cloud and the training and learning that's taking place there. Um, and we, we do participate with many of our products that are on those server platforms. But I think another important area for us is going to be AI at the edge. And this is where, you know, it is taking place on the factory floor, in the hospitals, in, your, in our homes, et cetera. Uh, and that is more inferencing and adjusting of what takes place as it's learning, uh, but also very quickly making the adjustments that are needed there. It needs performance. It needs uh, low power. Uh, we just announced an acquisition where yeah, there are some specific algorithms that allowed that to be able to uh, be done better. And so it is an ongoing part of how do we approach AI at the edge while we continue to supply into AI in the cloud. Right.